Hi, how are you? This is Steve with Automation Design and Development. Um, this here is the new web site that I'm putting up and putting together. I don't know if it'll be in this condition when you finally come to it, or uh, if it'll be exactly like this or modified. But um, I'm beginning to bang things together, and one of the first things I'm doing here is putting together a quick video to introduce some fundamentals of the Cisco command line interface for routers and switches. Now, for those of you that are accustomed to Windows, uh, you might be baffled a little bit by the command line interface. But for those of you that have been around for a while, you've heard of DOS and probably even used it. If you're an administrator, you definitely know what DOS is. Uh, in this case, it's actually a Unix-based operating system, and it is very, very similar to DOS and how it behaves. And because it's a command line, it doesn't mean that it's primitive. It's just abstract in a different way. It is not point and click. And what I'm going to use is emulation software that simulates the hardware and the environment quite well. It won't be a true... Uh, Telnet session, but it'll be very, very close to it so that it's virtually identical. And this is simply, as I said, introductory for people who have never even touched this before, and it would serve to orient their brain a little bit on how to work with this. So I'm going to begin by opening the emulation software. And like I said, it will simulate basically a command line interface, which is just a box, a window, with a blinking cursor in it. And in this case, you see the word router at the bottom with a greater than sign and a blinking cursor. This is referred to very often as the caret. And the host name here is router. Now, to be, begin with a switch or router, what you have to do is hit enter and just be sure that the line is alive and connected to the router switch. And, um, when you first open a command line box, it will say press enter to start. It prompts you what to do. And then this is what's known as user mode. Now user mode is not very powerful. The To invoke help at the command line, it is context sensitive help and you use it by entering a question mark. You do not type in a question mark, hit enter. As soon as you enter a command here, it's immediately acted upon. This is an executive environment. So as soon as I enter a question mark, we get the help list. And you see how it says more at the bottom? If you hit just the enter key, it will take one line at a time. But if you hit the space bar, it will page through and finish much more quickly. To get into a more powerful mode, you have to use the command enable to go into enabled or privileged mode, indicated by the hash mark at the end of the word router. To get out of it, you type disable, and you're back at the caret, enable. Now, you can at this point hit exit, and this brings you out two levels and completely disconnects your virtual terminal. Now, as you see here, it says con zero is now available. This means that the console line zero is available for someone else to connect to the router with. And if you hit enter, it calls it, connects it, and you enable back in session. Now, one of the most fundamental uh, commands that you will use forevermore going forward if you become an, a Cisco administrator is configure terminal. And you see the way the prompt changed. You've got the hash mark and it added the word config. This lets you know you're in configuration mode. You type exit, you're back at uh, enabled mode. Now, the help commands that are available to you under enable mode are different from those in user. Just like under configuration mode, the help commands are also different. 
you're at a higher level of, of administrative ability here in an enabled mode. Now, one of the most useful commands aside from configure terminal is show. There's an entire series of show commands for many, many, many different factors. Um, and you use the word show. And to show all the options you for the word show, you can enter a question mark here. And you could show what version of software you're running. You can show Cisco Discovery Protocol information. You can show the clock. You can show what's in flash memory. You can show what's in history. History is your command history. It will list the entire uh, last 10 commands you gave. This is modifiable, but we'll get into that later. Interfaces, you can show what interfaces are configured, protocols that are configured, sessions, who's connected to this machine or the machine you're telling that it into from this machine, etc., etc. More, hit the spacebar. And as I said, you can show PPP, show dialer, show queuing. Show is huge. Right now, uh, this machine has a running configuration. Helps if I spell it correctly. And what this is is a text file that contains the current configuration of this machine. We are connected to router number one. And these are the various configuration features. Now there are two configuration files. One is the startup config and the other one is the running config. The running config is the configuration that's loaded into RAM and actively running on the machine. Startup config is what the operating system of the machine goes to get from what's known as non-volatile RAM, NVRAM. Uh, the startup configuration is identical to the running config, but it's where it's stored when the machine is off. Thing is, these machines almost never, never, never get shut off, and you don't bounce them like you do a server or a PC. We, we call it bouncing when you just reboot them. Bounce a machine by uh, doing a power cycle. We don't do that to routers and switches usually. They run forever for years and years and years, not even ever getting shut off very often. But anyway, should they get restarted, they the operating system consults the NVRAM, the non-volatile RAM, where the startup config file is saved. Here, let's take a, take a look at this. I'm going to do show startup config. Non-volatile configuration memory is not present. Interesting. That means that nothing has been written to it. It is empty. Uh, show run. Um, I'm going to teach more about abbreviations as time goes on. If you hit, if you type in part of word and hit tab, it'll finish filling it in for you. Um, or you can type show run and the command line interface interprets it correctly all by itself. Now this is run. What you do is you copy the running config to the startup config using the command sequence copy run start now these are abbreviations uh, on the command line together which means copy the running configuration to the startup configuration like this I'm going to use the tab copy run running config start startup config and watch what it says building configuration okay that means it's just writing the current uh, running config to the NVRAM why so well say you're an administrator and you're changing a couple of uh, administrative parameters on an Ethernet card within the switch or router you then have a new running configuration and unless you copy these changes to the startup config the next time you restart that router or switch it will not have those um, configuration changes. So let's um, review. This is enabled mode. Exit takes you out. Uh, enter wakes the line. Uh, enable puts you in privileged mode. Uh, conf T puts you in configuration mode. 
uh, you cannot use the show commands in configuration mode. You can only use them in enabled mode. Show uh, history. Now there's my history of the last 10 commands I've given. You can show clock. It'll show the time that is uh, entered onto the switch or router. It might be updated from a central location on the network, or it might be just manually updated by you. Show protocols. These are protocols that are configured on this router or switch. And help is invoked using the question mark at whatever. And you can do show help. And that's it for a very quick introduction.